and maybe for for you all, here's an opportunity just to just to arrive. Um, there's segments that we move from to from to, and this is another segment of your day. You've arrived here um, for whatever reason that is, what whatever's brought you here. So let's just, um, if you would like to join me, um, you don't have to. Um, just just closing your eyes and. Remembering that we've got this thing called breathing that apparently happens while we're living life. And just breathing any way that you want, it's you and your breath. One thing that is synonymous is that there's an inhale and an exhale. They seem to feel different. Something happens with the inhale, and then something seems to happen with the exhale. I find the breath really interesting because it's there constantly. And yet it's temporary. It comes and it goes, and then something else comes and it goes. However, it's all continuously related to the breathing cycle. And then we breathe in different ways and something different happens. And just notice breathing in and maybe holding for two or three seconds. And then releasing. Just notice what's happening in between the breath because that's a different experience within itself. It's the breath is suspended. So something seems to be in a state of suspension. And even though there's suspension, there's still some activity within the suspension. Now you've arrived. Welcome all to tonight's Tea with Mo. I'll say hello to everyone in recorded video land. Uh, you're watching this now, present, and you'll be watching it now whenever you're watching it. So it's all the now. I like to record these because what it is, is in a sense, it's a diarised um, moment in time of what seems to be present within this vehicle. So here's a, let's capture that. Yeah. And let's capture it talking about a particular topic. Um, and the topic tonight is, um, is the, uh, yeah, this, this 3D, 5D, um, three dimension, three, man, three dimensional shift to five dimensional shift. And, and for those, I guess in the, let's call it the spiritual game, because it's, it's a big part of the game. Um, there's a lot of information, a lot of conversation that sits around it. Um, it has been happening for a while. There seems to be a, a push around this, or more and more information of, a, uh, of an awakening of a sense, an awakening of consciousness on the planet. Uh, more and more people seem to be awakening to something very similar. And so we then come together and go, hey, are you, are you having these thoughts as well? You know, or I seem to have this inner knowing. And do you get that? And then we then find people that seem to have something similar in their own way. Or they've heard about it and then explored it and inquired into it. So... So that's what we're, in a sense, going to talk about uh, tonight. Now, lectures on non-duality, you know, the, the philosophy of the centre is, is non-duality. Uh, non-duality basically suggests that everything's one. You know, that's all. Everything's one. So if everything's one, then that includes everything and yet nothing. Um, we can then talk about the things that move beyond uh, 
our maybe understanding of this world uh, as this physical experience it seems to last through a period of time that we call a lifetime and then we then pass and depending on what you believe uh, you'll either go up down around sidewards interdimensionally intergalactically back into source uh, into another universe who knows where okay. <coughs> which is interesting isn't it that we can have all of these particular belief systems and in a sense we're sort of going oh, i'm got a pretty good idea that this is where it's at, but I don't know if I can be sure. <coughs> and yet, there's this sense of knowing. Mm. Can I trust that? Sometimes, and sometimes not. Yeah. So, it takes us into multiple dimensions, multiple um, densities, multiple universes multiple theories around creation um, and yet it also can condense us and bring us into a state of nothingness so it's quite a broad subject that we can go to so that's lectures on non-duality tonight we're going to talk about the shift to 3d to 5d and um, a concept based around the ascension process okay because that's basically what this consciousness shift is okay um, there seems to be a mm, there seems to be a global awakening that is occurring. Now, does that mean that everyone's awakening on the globe? Potentially not. However, there seems to be an awakening process that is global. So it's not just in uh, Townsville <laughs> or Byron Bay. It's not located in a particular area. It just seems to be scattered throughout the world okay and throughout this world and people are sharing their own viewpoints around this this is what i think that it is oh these are these channelings that are coming through to me and this is what this scripture then says so people have got their own perception of what this is and the interesting thing is that they seem to be finding it from different sources and also finding it within themselves so they're finding it externally and they're also finding it internally. Now, whether that was an internal experience first to then seek validation from the external or whether it was an external experience that reminded me of something internal as well, which reminds me of that beautiful um, quote that I put up that was on the... Um, Where are we? See, Adrian, it's not really that easy for me to navigate this as well, okay? So. I listened to this the other day, um, a beautiful quote from Blaise Pascal. Now, I don't know who this guy is, but he sounds pretty groovy, so I'm going to have a look at him a little bit more. It says, our quest for something in... So, our quest for something inherently reveals our prior discovery of it. I'll say that again. Our quest for something inherently reveals our prior discovery of it. We wouldn't seek what we haven't in some form already encountered. So just, just let that arrive with you at the moment. We wouldn't seek what we haven't in some form already encountered. So what we're looking for is something that inherently we have already had access to. Uh, I find this really beautiful because it sort of suggests that um, it transcends time. You know, that if, if I'm looking for something in the future, um, the... It suggests that uh, I find it in the future, so I've already got, it, got access to it now. Because the future is now, and the past is also now. It's, it's experienced in the one moment called the now. So if we're looking for it, that means we've already experienced it, which I find interesting. Yeah? And so then the question is, well, how do you know when you find it? Well, you know when you find it because you've already found it before. So it's already, it's already resonant within you. 
that you're then looking for it. So then you go, oh, I found it. Shit, how did I know I found it? Oh, because I already had this in here. Oh, wow. I didn't find it there. I actually found it in here because it's always been here. <laughs> Which then suggests that uh, um, that just twists the mind around, doesn't it? You go, well, come on. Everything that I'm searching for, I already am. Then why am I searching for it? Do I need to search for it if I already am it? But see how, and see how the search allows you to already have it. It's a beautiful paradox. Mm -hmm. I'm searching for love. Oh, I've already got it. I'm searching for abundance. Oh, there it is again. I'm searching for something that I don't think I have. Oh, it's already there. So this ascension process or this awakening is what I'm finding is that, that those who are awakening to something have already achieved it. They've already experienced it. And yet the way that they experienced it was the path to it. <laughs> Whew, let me just hold on. I need to tether to something at the moment because it's, it's, it's just twisted me inside myself. Like, well, hang on. Right. So I, the journey creates the destination, but when I get to the just destination, I then already re I realize that I've already had what I've been looking for. But the only way that I found it was to seek it through the journey. So none of it makes sense, and yet it all makes sense. Okay? So just know that if you are awakening, if you feel as though you're awakening to something different where there's a shift, you've already, <laughs> we've spoken about this, we've already got it, we've already achieved it, we've already, in a sense, you know, we've, we've won the war, we've won the battle, we don't need to fight anymore, we can put down, we can put it down, because we already are it. So, there's this concept that we're shifting from a three-dimensional um, reality to a five-dimensional reality. Now, these dimensions, one would then suggest, and the way that the mind likes to look at things, is it needs to categorize things. Oh, that's 3D, that's 4D, and that's 5D. And here's the line that sits between it, that sort of thing. Yeah? However, when we look at colors, like in these orosoma bottles, there's a definite line because the, what is separating is the oil and the water. It's the fraction that they've placed upon. However, the colors themselves, as much as you can see that there's a yellow, there's a gold, there's a red, there's an orange, and you might see them as separate colors, they're all part of one spectrum. And depending on the hues, then that then starts to shift. But see how there's no actual delineation of, okay, you've stepped out of yellow now and you're into orange. You go, well... It's somewhere in that, yeah? So it's all part of the one spectrum. However, the mind and the eyes, the way that we sense things, it sees it in different fragments. It's like when we see, you know, the, the rainbow is, is, is light. It's all those, yeah? So the same thing with 3D and 5D is it's a spectrum of frequency. Now, within the spectrum of frequency, and we could call it a higher frequency, or more so a higher oscillation. It's, it's oscillating um, much, so the higher, this, uh, we can get a bit confused about oscillation of frequency. I'm just gonna keep it to frequency. It's telling me, shut up Maurice, keep it to frequency. <laughs> so with the frequency, the 5D perspective is a higher frequency than the 3D. Now that doesn't mean that it's better or worse. It's just, if we can start to see it through the eyes of equanimity and neutrality, that there's a difference. And of course there's a difference. That's all we need to be aware of. There's a difference. Yeah. The difference is determined by the way that we, or the difference is determined by the frequency that we are. So if you, want to, if you want to live in a, let's call a 5D reality, then I need to vibrate it at a fifth dimensional frequency. I can't exist in a fifth dimensional frequency while vibrating in a third dimensional frequency. I'm, I, can, I can't exist in two areas. I can only, I move towards a reality that is reflective of my frequency. Right. So we can call it, which is interesting because we call it, 
the law of attraction, there's a sense that we bring things to us because we're apparently the center of our universe. Yeah. However, it's probably more so that as we shift our frequency, we move to a world that is reflective of that frequency. Now, I'm sure that for each and every one of you, am I sure? No, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I'm imagining, because I can imagine it. Yeah. I can imagine that for maybe uh, each one of you, that as you've decided to um, uh, create boundaries, draw a line in the sand, um, let go of old thoughts, bring in new thoughts, you have basically shifted your frequency. And when you start to shift your frequency, what you start to notice is that there's people that used to be gravitating around you just don't seem to be there anymore. It's like, oh, I'm still living in the same town, but I haven't seen this person for months, if not years. And yet I used to see them nearly once a week. What happened then? So what has happened potentially, and, and this is you know, for, from, a, from a quantum physics perspective, many worlds theory, there is an, uh, it's an infinite number of parallel universes that are all sitting within the field of possibility. Okay? You are the probability that brings that possibility into manifest. So your frequency is representative of one of those parallel universes where you are interacting with uh, other people around you in exactly the same way, except at a particular frequency. So as you start to empower yourself and ask people, no, actually, let's rewind that one. As you start to work with yourself and become more self-empowered, you <laughs> sorry, breaking transmission. Sorry, sorry, am, am I allowed to cut in? Like you were talking about light. Bees see in ultraviolet. Bees see only ultraviolet. Sorry, I'm, I'm being rude, am I? Bees see in ultraviolet. Yes. Thank you. And consciousness can be in a bee, and consciousness can be in a human. And depending on that point of consciousness, there will be a different perspective and a different viewpoint. And each one of those viewpoints... Sorry for speaking up, I feel rude, but I just had this talking about colour. Yes. Please only see in ultraviolet. Beautiful, yeah. And I just want to acknowledge those parts of you that feel as though you've interrupted. So we're allowing this movement through you and so it's beautiful that it's expressed through that because you know what my totem is my totem animal is actually the bee oh, cool. <laughs> cool. to allow those parts to settle and that's where there was the break in the transmission so <laughs> let's see if i can pick it up do you remember where I was? <laughs> I don't know if you know where I am, that's the thing. Parallel, universe. Parallel universes. Yeah, right. So as we start to as we start to treat ourselves different, thank you for that. We just slipped back in there. As we start to treat ourselves differently, then we are then training others to treat ourselves in that way. Yeah? So it's this beautiful phrase that I don't know, I found somewhere. Um, you know, uh, how you would like others to treat you is how you need to treat yourself. Yeah. And so when you then start to treat yourself in that way, then the, that gives permission for others to treat you in that way. And um, that's where usually others say, well, you know what, you've changed. You go, yes, I have. I'm treating myself in a different way and I'd like you to do the same. And for some people that creates too much friction and then see how they then start to fall away because you're not vibrating at the same rate that you used to that attracted them. So you've then shifted to a different world where they're not part of that. And what they'll do is they'll continue to look for other people that are vibrating at the rate that you used to vibrate at so they can then treat that person in that way. Because that's the way that that person wants to be treated. Well, not necessarily wants to be treated, but believes that they should be treated for them to be accepted, for them to be safe. Yeah. Beautiful. Notice, notice, notice what's bubbling. Yeah. 
just allow it to be there because it's these words are activating they're activating and there's dna codes that start to shift and this is part of your healing process so welcome welcome my sister And really powerful here tonight. So 3D to 5D, different frequencies. Uh, beautiful Law of One. So if, you, if you're not familiar with the Law of One, check out Aaron Abke on YouTube, Law of One. He'll talk about the uh, difference between densities and dimensions. Um, Densities of consciousness and the densities of consciousness are, are related to the chakra system. So, you know, uh, base is first density, sacral is second density, third is solar plexus. The earth has moved from uh, the solar plexus, third density, and we're moving into a fourth density, not a fourth dimension, but a fourth density, which is then reflective of the heart, which is the green ray. So we move from the solar plexus and the solar plexus represents power and control. So power and control over others or the empowering once we have shifted that. So see, notice the light and the shadow. So as we shift to the light, we have this empowering approach and then we empower others. So we then become this conduit for that. And then this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bridge that sits between the solar plexus and the heart ray and the green ray. So here's the green ray. The green ray is the fourth density, which is what we've shifted into. And the green ray represents that I see you as another. I see you as another self. I see you as me. That's what namaste is, you know, it's, it's seeing. So, so we're, we've moved up into the, the green ray. So we see the colors that are sitting there, and the, the, the chakras. Like the aura of a person? It, that can be that. The aura can certainly represent particular things. I'm not so familiar with auras. Uh, it's more so the, the, the energy centers and what they actually then represent because then you move from the heart up into the throat. So as we're moving up the densities, um, it's, it's less and less dense. Um, light is able to um, be in its, in its truer form the, the higher we come up. So as we open the crown and then we move up through that way as well too. So at the moment we sit in the fourth density, fourth density, third dimension. Yeah, We're actually shifting into the fourth dimension and into the fifth dimension. So the fourth dimension, you really start to notice the shifts because of time. So the fourth dimension is really, in a sense, held by time. Um, what we've really significantly noticed is how time was compressing and also how time was expanding. It's only been a couple of days since we did a workshop, but then it feels like it's been, you know, one or two weeks. There's been so much information that's been jam-packed into that. Now, that's if you're vibrating within a fourth dimensional frequency, because you've got so much more information that's available to you. It also allows us to heal and transform. You know, because as you're moving up, the, the, the body, the, the, the mind-body complex is going, hey, um, we need to get rid of some luggage if we're going to hang out up in here. So what do we got? What's ready to go? You know, it's not like we need to dump all of the luggage. We just go, hey, um, I don't need those clothes anymore. You know, um, the, the, they're what I used to wear 10 years ago. That was the older version of me. Actually, why am I still holding on to them? You know, I'm just going to let them go. So I, I'm not going to pack them with me on my, on my trip. So as we then let those go, there's a little bit of space within the bag. And as we, you know, we, we hop on the plane, all of a sudden the bag starts to fill up. It's like an auto-filling bag. But it's filling up with new clothes. And the new clothes are representative of the new version of you that sit within that. Mm. Hence the goatee, hence losing the weight, hence the shifting within the clothes. Like I'm a new version of me. You know, th this, this has been here since nearly four months. Did a huge journey, came back, <laughs> realized I was God. Um, <laughs> not in the, holy crap, let's lock this fucker up. Uh, it's more so, mm -hmm. hey, I'm, I'm just one with everything. That's cool. That's really groovy. And came out of that experience and, and it just changed my life, literally. So now I'm a different version. I'm really, it's really interesting, this version of me. You know, I get to hang out with this and see what it feels like until it changes. That's, that's what we do, isn't it? We're evolving. 
And so we're moving into this fifth dimension. So the fifth dimension will then start to notice particular things. Uh, the question is, how would I know if I'm in 3D or 5D? What I'd like to say, and without using the ego and putting tickets on this place, is that this is a 5D space. We see that everybody that comes in here is another self. We see that everyone is connected to one thing, and that's the source, you know, having its experience through all of these infinite fractals of itself. And we get to hang out with ourselves. You know, fuck, I'm, good to, I'm glad to see me in your form. You know, and I just want to honor your experience, all of the light and all of the shadow that it's had through all of the lifetimes, because you know what? That's actually me having that experience. And, and I'm remembering that I am you rather than, oh, I've forgotten that I'm you. I, I forgot. I thought I was separate to you. And if you're separate to me, then I need to protect myself from you because I don't know if I can trust you. You know? So here is this, which is third density solar plexus yeah when we move into the heart ray you know, it's a beautiful i think it's 12 centimeters like or 12 millimeters it's it's a very small area but they call it the bridge and it's a beautiful bridge to traverse because as you as you come out of here uh, what, what was it i think we were looking at an orosoma card the other day and was talking about um finding the way out of eden but then remembering how you got out so you could then come back in and then let all of the other cells know how to get out. So this is a 5D space. There's a recognition of oneness. You know, we see you, we feel you, we acknowledge you for everything that you are. And we're just here as a reminder of that. And so when people come in here and we've heard this with these these comments um uh, i feel like i'm returning home you know there's something about this place and what it is about the place is the frequency it's the frequency that that we've we've created here it's the frequency that we've invited here it's the frequency that we as 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 the holders of the light within this space continue to remind ourselves of and so we can utilize this space to see where we are not light. And we can also utilize this space to see where we are. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty about this. Other things where you might start to, um, so it was beautiful. I, I, um, I follow a lovely lady called Elizabeth April and she is, she's a off planet, um, she's a off planet soul that's, chosen to incarnate into this lifetime to to be a beacon of light which i believe probably most of the people are i'd probably say all of the people are that come into this center because this center um this center we, we actually try to keep it quiet <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> nothing to see here <laughs> other than a nightclub strip <laughs> And a meditation center, <laughs> which you really have to look for, you know, otherwise you walk past it. And that's the beauty. The people that find their way here, they've heard the inner calling. Yeah. We advertise on the inner planes. Yeah, we are on Facebook and the social media and all that sort of stuff. However, it's, we're, putting the, we're putting the signal out on the inner planes. And when you start to hear that, you go, oh, I was just walking past and I think I went on this side of the street and we've had so many, oh, here I am. So feel that and heed that calling too, to, 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 to remember you know, what, what, what that is as well. So some of the things that you might notice when you're shifting from 3D to 5D and uh, with EA, Elizabeth April, what, what I was finding there was that I've been searching for, and it's interesting, whether this is my cognitive bias because I wasn't happy with all of the other explanations that I had around ringing in my ears. Does anybody else have ringing in their ears? Yeah, I've, since uh, 2008, yeah. I've heard this high-pitched tone. Yeah, yeah. And apparently, it's, um, and sorry if it's because of the, I speak sarcasm. Like, apparently, I'm tuning into the other side, the other dimension, the, the level up. Yes, okay, and so, and 
um, I love the sarcasm as well. Yeah, speak sarcasm. And I yeah. Jesus did too. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he certainly did. Well, what we potentially know of. I don't think I was there at the time, but I could probably travel back well, and, and see what was. Yeah, in a past life. In a past life. So <laughs> this explanation that I found, whether it's my cognitive bias, but it really resonated with me the most out of the other um, reasons why this could be happening. Sorry, I'll better shut up. I'm going to listen, sorry. Yeah, I'm just going to collapse you and just hold you there, if that's okay. Yeah. Is, is that okay? Yes. Yeah, because I only want to do it with your consent. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. So, the frequency, so the high pitch is a frequency. Yeah. And we can sort of get that. That frequency is what you're actually opening yourself to. So your clear audience is developing. Now, what I've noticed since I've had the ringing in my ears is my ability to um, telepathically receive signals, telepathically receive information, tune into particular things. So this is surrounding your telepathic ability, your, your clear audience, and that's why you have the ringing in the ears. So just start to tap into and feel into that because it might resonate with you, you know. It, it might be, oh, no, that one doesn't work for me, Maurice. Yeah. Um, you know, we have been told that it was, um, it was a, a beacon for uh, a marker of our, our starseed um, uh, origin families so they could keep a track on us. I go, yeah, well, that's fine, but can we turn the fucker down? You know, like it's really, it's always there. Oh, they're trying to get your attention. Yeah. So that you know you have this ability. That's, yeah. Quiet down, you'll hear the message <laughs> when they stop trying to get through. Yeah, so it's it's really interesting. And like, I'm, it's, it's always on for me, always on for me. And it's only recently, probably within the past four years, it really started to ramp up and I went, what is going on here? And initially we thought it was um, 5G, not 5D, but 5G, you know, turning up the dials and things like that. Potentially that could be as well. So that could be another thing. So is this, um, is, is this ringing in the ears, which I find is quite synonymous with a lot of the people that I talk to. And, whether, and it's interesting because... Um, if you've been working in the construction industry, then they're all going into 5D, you know. <laughs> Possibly not, okay. Maybe a different frequency. I don't know. I don't know. But if it is, I want to go in the construction industry so I can get this, you know. <laughs> um, you'll start to notice with the shifting is um, when people are talking in a particular way where there's judgment, where there's gossip, where there's um, continually putting down others, it starts to really um, rub on you and you want to, in a sense, move away from it or you want to advocate for it or, or just, in a sense, just be quiet and, and step away from that. So just start to notice that as well. And what you might start to find is that you're drawn to people, experiences, situations where there seems to be a lessening of the ego within the interactions as well. So I, I think maybe that's what this space offers as well. You know, we're, we're, we're more open to seeing you as, as you are rather than, oh, what do you do? You know, what car do you drive? You know, where do you live? That sort of thing, you know. So, um, th they're not necessarily the first questions that come out. It's more so, can I give you a hug? Yeah, sure, no worries. <laughs> and when we hug people, we feel. So here is this, um, this recognition through the feeling state rather than this thinking state as well. So that's what you might start to notice as well too. Uh, I'm mindful of the time. All right, beautiful. Um, the the last question I have, and, and look, yeah, this is a huge topic, and, and and primarily I just wanted to revisit this because I've spoken about this a couple of times, but probably not so much around the frequency and uh, and coming to this final question because initially it was presented to me that um, 
that with this 3D and this 5D, at the moment, there's an overlaying of both, where you can slip into um, uh, a 3D experience and then you know when you're in it and then you can know when you're sort of moving out of it into more of a 5D experience. And these are overlaid and there's 3D and 5D that is happening on the same Earth. Okay? There is this concept where the Earth um, myotically splits like a cell and there's a physical 3D Earth and then there's a physical 5D Earth. Now, the interesting thing is that because they're in different dimensions, it would make sense that they wouldn't necessarily coexist. So, because a third dimension is different to a five, fifth dimension. Yeah? Um, as much as I've said that they're part of the same spectrum, they're on different parts of the spectrum. So there is potentially a locational difference within that. Now, I don't know if that's the case. Um, I find it, it's interesting, I go, I find that a bit far-fetched, but I'm okay with the Palladians coming down and speaking to me and channeling me, but I think that <laughs> that's a little bit far-fetched. It's interesting. No. No. So if you're going to play in this realm, then it's like, oh, that sort of makes Explaining. sense. That, that could happen. No. You know? it's, it's, it's in the possibility. See, it's in the field of possibility. So it potentially could happen. What other narratives around this are suggesting that the um, that the earth is actually has a um, a 3d matrix hologram program um, that is being projected onto it and that outside of earth we have a 5d universe so everything outside of earth is actually a 5d universe it and it actually suggests that the earth is already a fifth dimensional earth but we're locked into a third dimensional holographic projection so within the third dimensional holographic projection it's still using the law of attraction however the narrative that is encouraged to, uh, and promoted to the mass population is one of a lower frequency. All right, so notice, notice the narrative in, within our history. So we, we, need, we need to be aware of our, our his, history and our cosmic history. So that the history that we have been told, and I'll say the word sold, is not our true history. You know, for some of us, we go, oh yeah, there's ancient Lemuria and there's Atlantis in, and there's, you know, um, the, there's um, the Anunnaki, uh, there's the reptilians, there's, there's all of this galactic uh, history that exists upon this planet that is not within the mainstream. So we're led to believe that the pyramids of Giza were put together by a bunch of slaves. <laughs> like, how fucking stupid yeah. do they expect you to be? <coughs> Especially when these things are apparently at least 3,000 years old, maybe 5,000 years old, and the, the precision in the placement has not shifted over that period of time, and we don't actually have the apparent technology to build something that, like that now. But a bunch of slaves 5,000 years ago put it together because some architects were really smart. Was it sound? Did, did they use sound? Yeah, to levitate. So when, so when you... So because you are everything, you then become the frequency of the rock that you can then move. So you're tapping into the same frequency that the rock is, and then the rock and you are one, and then you then shift the rock. So through levitation and through frequency, sound can be used to create that frequency as well. Because there has been um, Tibetan, Tibetan masters with the big, really long trumpet horns, and these guys would just blow into this, and they had these huge rocks that were sitting at the end of it, and the rocks were levitating. So there's actual video footage of that. But, oh, don't show anybody because that couldn't happen. 
So see how dumbed down we are, right? So we're dumbed down. We're, our, our control has been placed upon us, but we've also given our control and power to others, right? And see, this is the awakening process. Oh, hang on. Maybe I'm more than what I'm told I am. I'm remembering something. Something's going on here, and this stuff's bubbling up, and it's causing so much stuff within me. I'm, oh, I can't be with this person anymore. I can't be with it. There's so many ruptures that are occurring at the moment within relationships, within the world. There's an eruption, and the eruption is spewing out so much stuff. And you know what then settles is what we then have to then step from. That's the new platform. So what we're going to potentially notice is there's a falling away of the old platforms, the old platforms that are around control, right? Now there's going, there is a big last ditch effort to try to hold on, but it's, there's so many people that are awakening. The, the consciousness of the planet is awakening. And so what I believe at this moment in time, next week, it might change, yeah, but at this moment in time, which is the 13th of September, I do believe, 14th, 13th, September, 2023. Maybe this will go down in the history books. I don't know. But what I do believe is that the earth is already in a five dimensional reality. The universe is 5D. Okay. So what that means is it's, it's, it's all love. It's, it's all rainbows and unicorns and fluffy clouds. And we've got telepathy where we're meeting each other. You know, the beautiful thing about telepathy is you can't lie to anybody. <laughs> And it's instant knowledge. It is instant knowledge. And it's better than verbal. Yes, yes. And, you know, it's interesting when you say that because there are some galactic races that use both telepathy yes. and verbal to communicate. And it's interesting because um, they can say three words, but those three words can contain telepathically so much information. So this is something to notice as we're moving to 5D. When someone says words to you, try not to just automatically re, uh, respond to it or react to it. And just no lie. Just allow, I'm going to squash you down again. Yes. All right, I'm going to hold you in that container because you're shooting off here and everywhere. But I love you too, brother. Notice those words. See what sits, what, what, what is filling what, what those words contain. I'm going to say four words. I love you, brother. And even though they're four words, each of those words is a container of information. Now, if you can start to tap into that, you're already in 5D. Yeah. So what I believe is that the... Um, the holographic matrix that is being projected onto this earth is starting to dissolve. It's starting to break away. And what's breaking it away and what's dissolving it is the higher frequency of people awakening. And as they awaken, then we then start to see different things. We start to see different colors. We start to feel differently. We start to speak differently. We start to move in different spaces. And we start to have these clairaudience and claircognizance and clairsentience. All these clairs are then starting to come through more and more and more. They're, they're available to you because they are inherent within you. Yeah. So coming back to that really beautiful... Um, really beautiful phrase if I can find it again because I think it'd be a nice way just to complete this our quest for something our quest for something inherently reveals our prior discovery of it we wouldn't seek what we haven't in some form already encountered. So if you are here interested about the 5D Earth, interested about ascension, interested about awakening and sharing and shedding and spreading your light, the only reason why you're seeking it is because you already are it. You did find it and this was part of the path of finding it. So I'm really glad to have been a part of your path of finding it. 
and that you chose to come in here um, consciously, unconsciously, guided, dragged, kicked, whatever it was. And it's just beautiful to, to be with you in this moment, you know, because I get to be with me in all of these other forms. So thank you, thank you all.